So this session is going to be divided in four parts. First, we're going to give you an introduction of how we are framing My Data for Children. What do we mean? What are our objectives? And also give some instructions of what is going to happen in the next part. The next uh, 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 big set, it's the workshop with children. That will start in about 10 minutes. And for that, we will split in, two, uh, in three groups. Uh, one for those 12 and under, another one for teenagers 13 and 18, and then we will have another session with the experts. Uh, after that session, the children are free to go, but of course, if anyone, or especially if any ten teenager wants to continue with the uh, dialogue and analysis, you are of course most welcome to join. When we start with the dialogue and analysis, depending on the situation, who stays there, we will ask if the session can be recorded or not. In the dialogue and analysis, we are going to uh, reflect a bit of what the adults, what we have uh, uh, learned from the children. And we are going to think of how my data community can do uh, in the framework of my data for children following UNICEF digital rights for children. And finally, we will give you some more information of what is happening next with us. So as a, a quick introduction, what, why we are here today is because we want to empower children, but not only children, also their families and their circle of trust as they navigate and construct their digital world. And we are a, a working group at this moment. We are not a thematic group yet because we're still in the phase of exploring. And it's very clear for us that this is a mission that we cannot do by ourselves, meaning my data working group, but it's a highly collaborative uh, 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 effort for which we are looking at potential partners of how to build something that it's both impactful and sustainable over time. So from our perspective, we are gui uh, building guiding frameworks and tools based on UNICEF, uh, children's digital rights and my data principles. We are also happy to share our knowledge, experience, expertise, uh, research and the open questions that we come abroad. For that purpose, we are going to publish uh, early next year, a first document in which to share the, the thoughts that we have at the moment. We also want to support the development of my data based concepts, services and solutions for children. We don't want to stay only in theory perspective, but move of how this can be impacting services. And we want to co-create the My Data approach for children with children and with families, educators, governments, and service providers. Today is the first effort to do so. Uh, we also believe that the minimum that we all must do is protect children, but that's not enough. We also need to empower them and inspire them to be the best that they can be. We want to take these three layers in consideration in everything that we uh, uh, do in the uh, perspective that as we build the architectures for digital experience for children, these three elements have to come in hand. Protecting is basic, but it's not enough. We need to have children become powerful in their own digital worlds, and we also need to inspire them. We need to uh, facilitate a digital world in which they can achieve the most that they are able to. In order to do that, there's already quite many guiding principles. We have the UNICEF Children's Digital Rights uh, for Data, the manifesto that was published some months ago and which, for which my data was one of the commentators. We have the Sustainable Development Goals that for instance, the uh, work that we're going to do with Fujitsu is directly related of how these efforts support uh, the development goals. We also have my data principles and we have a great work done uh, uh, by the group Designing for Children's Rights in which they have translated UNICEF digital rights into concrete principles for designing for them. Uh, my favorite part of the D4CR is that they 
speak in a children's voice. So they take a very empowering perspective towards children's actions. So in a summary, we, have, we know what needs to be done. Now we have to get to do it. And for that, from the perspective of my data and data rights, this is something that requires special attention because the data ecosystems of children is even more complex than the ones in the adults. Because when we talk of a child, of a child-centric, we cannot talk of the child itself. The child is relying in a circle of trust formed by the parents and the guardians, but then also other groups of people that are supporting the development. There is a family and friends, there is the educators, the healthcare providers, the government, and other public and private service providers. So when we talk about children's data spaces, we are talking about the complex ecosystems around this diverse group of people. At the same time, we are very aware that whatever we do needs to be great experience. If it's not better of what there is today, if it's not better that TikTok, if it's not better than Facebook, if it's not better than the games that they play, even if it's ethical, it's going to be very difficult to adopt it. So we start, and also as this workshop is uh, based on design thinking, we start from what makes a great experience. So as an hypothesis, the first thing is that the child has to love whatever digital solution they're using it. At the same time, the solution has to help them be aware of what it means, the digital world, and what it means to be responsible. From the parents or guardians perspective, the first thing, of course, is the child is safe, but also it should make the life of the parent and the guardians easier uh, uh, and more productive. The circle of trust is a very diverse group of people and, and functions that work together for the best ch child's best interest. So for them as well needs to be something that provides uh, them a greater uh, chance of succeeding in this mission. It helps to the children to learn and take responsibility. So in other words, a great digital experience is an experience that it works, that it's lovable, and that is fair and trustable. So these are in a way the three fundamental elements that we need to consider when developing a good experience, and this is especially crucial for children. In this workshop, we are going to do two things. The first thing is that adults, we're going to sit back, observe, and listen to what the children have to say. And we're going to do that so we can act in their best interest. From the child, what we want to learn is what they perceive as their experience today, what is working and what is not working, and also get ideas of what would be their ideal digital experience. So based on that, we have created some exercises that we will go through in the second part of this uh, uh, workshop. So uh, we are going to be moving into uh, 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 the middle board. Uh, Miko is sharing now the link and the password, and we will stop recording after this uh, 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 introduction that I'm doing now. So now we will start this by asking each of the facilitators to give a two minute summary of how the conversations went into their group. So if we can start with Dixon. Oh, okay, yeah, yes. Um, so so um, we, we kind of don't have enough time. So uh, basically, uh, we, 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 Frederick and then someone and, and me write down what, what we want to do, maybe we can do um, as, a, an, as an action. And we don't have enough time just to uh, have a full discussion. So. <clears throat> so, so to summarize, um, so, so sometimes it's it's if we don't have enough time to read through the whole um, manifesto, then we we kind of um, misunderstood. For example, for uh, shifting the responsibility of uh, data protection from children to uh, companies and governments, um, we have a misunderstanding that hey, then uh, the children won't have the won't be empowered to to choose um, the data the personal data management anymore. So, but actually it's it's not the case so uh, we we have to kind of like iron that out and 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 the other thing would be uh 
we we kind of choose for me i would say things that we can really do it's um always um if you can zoom in to the first one uh, protect children their data so we have one big heart over there which is uh, de define how consent to be collected when it comes from children so th that that's one of the things we think it's important and then the second one it's um I would say it's in the in the middle. Um, co consider, I think, have a have a local have a local exercise in local language. It's kind of um, similar to the one that I wrote. Like um, we involve the children NGOs to reproduce this workshop and then make make it more um, widespread. And um, and the other one, it's right in the middle. Is uh, the SSI one? So um, someone suggested. Um, for, for the oops, for, for the framework if 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 we have ssi then it's always like um quite quite safe because um you you don't share you sh you don't share um excessive of data with anyone else so yeah that, that's that's all we have thank you Paula. very good <laughs> thank you so so much dixon and and, and the team Biko, um, <laughs> would you like to continue Yes, thank you, Paula and Dixon. So uh, uh, we were in a group um, uh, meant for, for the teenagers for from 13 to 18 year olds. And we had uh, only one team present, but uh, they, they had had a lot of ideas. So uh, the team included the parent and then also, also a child and basically as you see actually the most most popular feeling in in this first part was was fear or what what makes you scary so that collected uh, most ideas of these four and basically the things that are scary in today's digital life were uh, the manipulation by algorithms so to say and the well lack of control that one might feel while using the applications and yeah feel of isolation was here uh, and yeah then while we move we end this with the positive side so what's what what were the favorite things but i now move on to the boring side there was only one idea and that was uh, that the use of tech in school was a bit felt like a bit boring uh, then what makes you angry there were mentions about well this was related to what might feel scary in a way and then the best things of course were able to connect with people and applications that are really easy to use and uh, well, the connection might maybe was the main point over here as a favorite thing. Um, then the ideal digital future, the team didn't have so much time to focus on that, but um, the addiction was one point and how to reduce the feeling of being addicted. Uh, then we talked a bit about education, education of uh, child, children and teenagers in school, so they would be more uh, more informed and more aware of these things and uh, yeah and then one really concrete thing was screen time so uh, so reducing screen time a bit and yeah well that, yeah that was one concrete addition so yeah we had this kind of discussion and it was really interesting and the participants commented that this, it was nice maybe this wasn't like an opening of a longer discussion also between the parent and the child so good situation to have this kind of discussion together and do you Mary have some additions Mary was also there in the group okay yeah thanks um yeah it was it was very very nice as Paul, Paula said that um to have real real children and teens here uh with us so yeah, we were we were really happy to, you know, 
hear hear the real real voices and and you know talks and and all this so um yeah and i don't i don't think i don't think there was nothing nothing more that we could we could uh summarize from here thanks Mikko. i think you you did a great job <laughs> yeah Thank you both, and thank you, Agustina, that uh, she sent a message in the chat that they feel their their own, but somehow they were not able to listen to Miko's facilitation, but their input is there ah, as well. Okay, wow, good to hear. <laughs> and by yeah. the way, I just mentioned that uh, the ones who participated in this group, if you if it's okay for you to that screenshot of your uh, board would be used in the publication. You can drag this uh, permission granted uh, picture on the top of your board. So if it's okay for you that we publish this or use this in some publication, you can do that. But otherwise, we of course won't. Thank you. Okay, and now I go uh, to our group. We had two fantastic kids designing today, Mr. Avocado and Miss Punk Queen, and uh, eight, nine and 10. And uh, they had really good feedback on what they like or not. And this is something that I have seen already with children of the clarity that they have of what is good, acceptable and not acceptable. Uh, one thing that uh, uh, came quite clear not only from today's work, but the, 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 the pilot I had done with my own son is that the three kids already at that age between five and 10 were completely against adverts. And this is something that has surprised me uh, uh, quite a bit. That is not that we as parents feel they are not appropriate, but from the experience perspective, children are, are very unhappy about having to deal with adverts. Uh, after the children were done really actually very quick uh, uh, with their input, uh, and then we continued the conversation with, with the parents, uh, with OD and Ian. And one of the things that came quite clear asking what did they learn today was first from one perspective of, uh, there were two perspectives. One parent felt that the child doesn't really understand how the big machine works. And the other one felt that the child understands quite well how the machine works and the dangers of it, but perhaps is not being empowered enough. So in a way, this is what we discussed at the beginning of how to find the balance between protection, empowerment, and inspiration. It's a, 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 a crucial of the child experience. Uh, it also uh, came that uh, the part of creativity that unfortunately many of the digital services are just not the best that they can be. Uh, there is a huge potential for creativity, but the things that are popular perhaps are not the best at that. So, so we were discussing of how uh, our parents and the circle of trust could really understand these three dimensions to find digital solutions that work for uh, 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 developing the three dimensions of protection, empowerment, and inspiration. So thank you, thank you for all the children that participated. Uh, I don't know the rest, but I feel that the children are the best designers <laughs> in the world. And it's always so inspiring to hear them. They have quite often so much more clarity than we do adults. And uh, uh, from that perspective, I would like now, if it's okay with everyone to move to the next phase in which we will just post questions and uh, for the, uh, grown-ups to think about these questions. Uh, do it very quickly that you put your ideas on, on paper and then we will have open discussions. So um, we start, I ask everyone to come to this part of the board. I will bring everyone to me. So to this board, and we will start from the first uh, question. Uh, we are going to have three minutes for you to think and put your input in a post-it here. Take whatever post-it you want and write. Uh, uh, three minutes and then we discuss. We start now.
Right, time's up, but of course you can keep writing. But what I would like now is to open the floor for anyone to start commenting. Since there is no volunteers, maybe I can ask Oti. Oti is representing today UNICEF Finland. So maybe Oti, could you help me? opening up the discussion. I will help you, yeah. So I participated with my nine-year-old son. And um, even though I've like worked with this, of course, from a work perspective, it's completely different to approach the subject as a parent and uh, like really intimately discuss these things with my son. But, um, but yeah, so something that surprises me is that when I look at all the games that and all the apps that he uses on his phone, uh, not very many of them are actually and truly designed for children his age. It just it just surprises me. So I think I mean there are responsible um, games out there, but they're not mainstream, and that's what we need to change. Thank you, Oti. Anyone wants to comment on that? Why, why, why is that? Why is there a lot of crap? So um, Mark Lazar here. So we've been, um, we did a bunch of research on uh, children being onboarded into e-learning platforms um, in, during the pandemic. And we were researching um, children's surveillance and access to uh, privacy rights. and. Uh, we found that um, more than 95% were being tracked with Google cookies in school and outside of school, and that no one knew, knew about this, and that uh, there is no standard for being able to um, see, you know, uh, or control your metadata, and that the, the metadata really is our children's microdata, you know, the really uh, special data that it shows what they're interested in and uh, what their intent is and what they want. And uh, this is all being, um, you know, taken against the law here in Canada to the US and commercialized and that, that there's this sort of uh, surveillance that leaves us to our children's exposed. And it sort of robs us from, from, from seeing this data. So that that's really, you know, the hidden, uh, part of, you know, bad identity management, um, which is really, you know, uh, these Google cookies. So that was a really shocking thing uh, to see and learn about. Mark, you have been working with, with how to solve this issue uh, 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 in Canada. Can you tell us if there has been some step forwards yeah, well, we had um, a great breakthrough and we've been talking, you know, with the Children's um, Digital Rights Council and the Canadian um, Standards Council and government are really interested in combining standards um, so that uh, into the law, but um, very much uh, transparency over uh, who is in control of, you know, who's, who's accessing the data is very much um, a, a very you know who, where is the metadata going we think that 
you know, this metadata really it should be a part of the school education record and uh, the school education records are really a data trust and that the policy uh, should be there to, to help the te teachers. Um, and it's a complicated problem because a lot of the data is in these uh, commercial systems that are not even from Canada, you know, uh, or, and uh, so how do you, um, you know, get your children's data back from like uh, Google Educate? So um, the, one of the things we've been working on is uh, instant access to privacy rights. So a standard for uh, privacy rights access um, that children can, can use, so a universal privacy button um and that uh, these rights should be independent of the service providers so um those are the sort of the breakthroughs so far um and standard so we're working on standardizing uh the state of consent or different types of uh, states of consent so and hopefully that's something we can do uh, here in my with my data children is work on work on that Great. Th th thank you so much, Mark. Anyone wants to comment on that? Yeah, and if you're still there, I know you have been working on some issues like this for so many years. I, I think Ian is gone. gone. I couldn't see his name there. Yeah, okay. Are you, uh, now you can comment. Yeah, I'm here uh, for what, on the same room as Anske. I'm chipping in on the uh, mirror board. Yes, yeah, you just, if, if you want to comment something on the standardization of the content and this uh, uh, universal privacy button that Mark was talking about. I, I believe that you have been working on identity for kids as well. Yeah, when we did a, a project a couple of years back called Bids for Kids, which is essentially is about lifelong data. So the way we handle things at the moment is so far removed from how we should be doing it. It's, you can almost blow it up and start again or start, start something different in parallel. It's a, that, that was cutting a, it was cutting a bit. We have really bad internet connection here. Okay, okay. Yes, thank you. Well, well one of the things we've, um, we, we really like is the Com UN Comment 25 on children's rights in online environment. Uh, and 100 in, I think, 37 countries have uh, signed up to be accountable for this. Um, and this is really a good code of, uh, perhaps a code of conduct that can be used to standardize with, um, and that a code of practice uh, for um, access to privacy rights, instead of a, a link to a privacy policy, uh is is um one of the key things we've been we've been working on for that and you know the code of practice i think is really this you know standardization of consent and the best practice um and uh yeah you know it's ridiculous that it's expected that kids can click on cookie banners and terms and conditions and uh po privacy policies that no one's ever read you know so this this is um you know the european union and the government's really coming down on this and saying that this isn't acceptable and now i think it finally opens the door for uh these new solutions which have been really um blocked from the marketplace so i think it's a really amazing time to to do something now yes thank you mark anyone else wants to Talk about that or, 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 or general ideas of how to improve the child experience. I see that people have already typed quite a bit. I have some kind of uh, inspirations from, from this exercise uh, because of the internet and everything, it seems that it's quite hard to use, right? So it, it's kind of remind me that um, some, some place even in, in global north in, in Japan or some, some, some other 
place that the uh, the uh, less uh, less fortunate people, um, um, single mothers or whatever, um, to, um, like for them, having access to digital. Um, how can you say it? H having access to to this like idea of data privacy and everything, maybe it's, it's still far away for them. So then, it it makes them become quite vulnerable because then they 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 have this digital gap and then. Um, it's more, much easier for them to to accidentally share the children's data without like knowing the, uh, the the harms of it. So, so so that that would be something that we want to think about also. Um, like besides e-learning or something else, it might be good to have some kind of physical like education and then uh, help helping those who doesn't have digital access first too. Uh, that's all. Um, giving the money back to you, Paula. Thank you so much, Dixon. That, that's really good. And that connects to the workshop earlier today about the Global South. Uh, if, if it's OK with everyone, I, I, my friend Agus, who is a designer and has been working a lot with children, came today. She's not yet a My Data uh, a member, but she's a designer, and she has also been writing children's book. So Agus. Maybe you can help me starting uh, uh, with some ideas that after this session you could have for improving the child experience. Oh, yes, I would like to. Yes, please, <laughs> go ahead. Well, uh, well, uh, mm, I mean, for, for me, the, the, the technical data is quite, uh, the, the technical information is quite, um, I'm not so used to, but what, um, I've been uh, like adding now in the in the in the um, this board. It was, for example, that for example, it's is is very good that that the kids the, the, uh, that they could access to the um, to the consequences of the um, of when when they they upload a game or when they go in a to to use a, a, a some tool in the internet. That the, that they on on their own can uh, can get the idea of the risks that involves to to get in those things. For example, uh, in 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 the case of my family, we are uh, like we, we we take care of the of the things that the kids use and so on. But however, uh, we have the impression that they feel. Uh, mm, they feel that they I mean like. Uh, they, 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 they don't have the fear. They, they know that bad things ca can happen, but they never uh, um, uh, see that it can happen to them. So for me, it would be nice to, to have some uh, easy way for kids. I mean, if you, if, if it's uh, in, uh, in the, in all the displays of of uh, when you um, you put an app on your phone, it comes all the um, the, the the sharing that you, you you have to approve, and for for us for the for the adults is difficult to understand. It would uh, imagine for a kid when they like uh, in in my case we have the some some programs that they control what they put, but sometimes the kids don't don't, don't have that or don't use that, so. I think is uh, we have to speak their language and we have to to approach and to um, I don't know if, I, if if it's clear the idea. <laughs> yes, I completely get it. Of 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 how, how if we don't understand the terms and I think in our group one of the kids said that I don't like the I agree buttons. I don't like them either. Yeah, <laughs> I never read the the, 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 the the terms because they are you cannot ever understand them. So how to do uh, 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 this sort of consensus? And I think this is in a way what Mark uh, a solution that uh, could be is what Mark was saying as the universal privacy button that with one button you put the limits of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. Yeah, but in in, in yeah, in a way that kids are able to understand, yeah, to yes. understand be, because when they play for example online i mean there are like like many games that are online and they are on risk that people as my daughter was 
was putting, was writing there. I mean, there are people that say that there are some age and they are different age just to get in contact with youngers and so on. Mm -hmm. So those, those things, I mean, how to yeah. point those things up <laughs> for kids that don't have the family on top of them. Right, yes. And even if you're on top of them, right? Yeah. <laughs> They're second, no, you cannot be. Yes. <laughs> and something that, that didn't come from the children, but at least I have a, a concern is like, because you can control what kids do. I mean, you can check like more or less like in the places they move uh, when when they are at home but in i mean in in many places they get they get to the wild in the uh, in 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 school i mean in like after the school and so on i don't know how how is how is possible to get kids to stick to to what is allowed for kids, you know? I think that that needs to, to be decided between the parents, the kids, and the, the close yeah, but not, community. But not, always, but not always the parents are present. No, that's why I also added that the, the, the community where, where things are happening. Uh, mm. It's and and it's not a, you know it's not about age limits per se it's it's about how how mature is the the kid we're talking yeah, about yeah yeah so, yeah so yeah. Th th that's what I'm trying to get into the gray zone here uh, I, I hate hard lines <laughs> I think kids need to be allowed to to wander and explore uh, uh -huh. and and and, and yeah. th that that is the possible control that we can ever achieve I don't think we should have complete control. Mm. No, 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 no. I, 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 I'm not uh, also with the limits, but I mean, is somehow that as that the the kids move like safely, <laughs> yes, you know? Yes. Well, they yeah, don't. like you don't let them. <laughs> in the street. You can tell them you watch the both sides before crossing the street. But in the digital world, how, how to do that? I think that's what Alus means, right? Yeah. How, how to, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to, to put that, yeah. which are the safe areas and where do you have to put extra attention? Hey, we, we have uh, now uh, 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 a couple of minutes to, to finalize this discussion and then we move to some other information of what is happening next. But I would like to take uh, a next two or three minutes to think of, what should be the call into action? What do we need to do, my data community, to push this issue forward? So that's the third and final question. And uh, there's already some comments. And uh, anyone, I, I think we're, uh, uh, we have Lawrence, that I don't have the pleasure of meeting you, and Brixon, uh, and who else that have not had a chance to talk. So if you want to add something, Please go ahead. But if not, I could ask actually Nico and Mary their thoughts on these ideas because they have been working outside for quite many years outside of my data community quite a lot with uh, data literacy and uh, um, research on how children and teenagers are using uh, uh, the digital world. So do you want to add some ideas here of what should be done now in concrete terms? Well, I added there, uh, thought about educational material because I think this is partly a technical issue and we need that, for example, the universal privacy button and all those. But on the other hand, it's also about like educational issue. So we need uh, aware, awareness among children and also among parents. And basically, I think we just need more discussion, discussion with the children, uh, discussion between parents and children, discussion between children and the teachers. So I think as someone said already about this workshop that it was like eye-opening to have this kind of like 
intimate discussion with the child about these topics because that ne doesn't necessarily happen during the everyday life. So I, I think as well, I, my background is in education and as it is, I would like to see like uh, educational, more like educational videos, more structures of this kind of discussions that uh, can be in schools, but also at homes, at homes between the parents and the children. So, so this, this kind of material is needed, I think. That's one thing um, that I, I wanted to add. Yeah, thanks. Thank Paula. you. Uh, yeah, if I can add add to Mikko's idea about education, uh, of course, this uh, technology education or, or some kind of systems thinking on futures uh, parts could be maybe meaningful to, to add to any kind of uh, also the education of the educators. So teacher training, practically, it might might be one good angle also to facilitate the conversations and the ideas what the children have uh, that they are not just okay now you're talking about the games and now you're talking about your phone and, and things like that so this this is not school stuff so it, it would be really interesting to encourage the children really to um, a little bit formulate and design their thoughts and ideas it was maybe my my takeaway from this from today. Yeah, that, but that's that, I think that's really good to think of how to educate the educators, because that's a way to to to, to reach the children. Right, we should start thinking at a systemic level. I see hey, that Ansku has raised. Yes, Paula, this is Aldi. Aldi. Can I just add? I, th I think all this education is super important, not just for kids, but also for adults, because um, mm -hmm. we're the ones who are going to have to show the example and lead the way. But at the same time, I feel it's super important to work with industry and to make, make sure that companies understand and respect these requirements, because um, this should be de facto, where if a child goes to use an app, then we know that it's safe. Just wanted to bring mm -hmm. that, that point of view in as well. Yes. Thank you for reminding us of, of that. It shouldn't be something special or an extra feature, but it should be the base point. Anything that doesn't respect that, it shouldn't be in the market. Right, but to have to enforce that, that's another issue. But I yeah. see that Ansku has a raise hand for some time. Yeah, thanks. Maybe, hopefully, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I was at this conversation. It's just like what we were talking here before uh, in the like in the workshop here with the people was that maybe we should really be in contact with different schools and, and different uh, educational systems. And how can we how can we uh, help and bring these uh, this thinking and ideas there? Because I I know that some hubs have been put more more in a systematic way like. Uh, like this collaboration with different educational systems. Yes. Has, has there been any, in a way, in my data community already some work with the educational institutions? Something that we could build on top of that or reach to? Ian, have, have you been in the, have you been like uh, in contact with the school? <laughs> Uh, no, but Thomas, who's one of the other yeah, in, the, yeah. in the Scotland Hub, was yeah. very active in the school. Yeah. So we can talk to Thomas. He has been uh, from the Scotland Hub. Yeah. Okay, too. Yeah, it's good, good, good suggestion because. Before COVID in, uh, in, in Japan, uh, FIT2 has a showroom that we can invite anyone like non-employees to, to, to join and then have a sections on, on topics. So sometimes um, students like in a younger age, uh, they come with the parents and then to learn about technical stuff or totally something non-technical. So um, I would say it would, it would have the same, same thing in, 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 in Finland also, or maybe in other places that um, ask, the, ask the enterprise to contribute their time and, and, and employees 
to help out in these um, ventures of hel helping the children and, and guidance and, and teachers. It's a community work and, and it will be good for the SDGs. That's all, I'll go back to you, Paula. Also maybe connected to the global maturity workshops that we had earlier, we were talking also in there, in that workshop, you, you raised it actually, Paula, yourself, like uh, somehow produce materials and educational uh, for, for the, for the for the countries and places that don't have the access to, to similar uh, materials that we have supporting these countries also. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you so much, everyone, for ideas. You can still put anything that comes to your head into that, but I will uh, 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 shift now to uh, a little bit of information because we are reaching the end of the of the uh, workshop today. Uh, I just wanted to share what is happening next. Uh, so, uh, Dixon, can you tell about what we will do with Fujitsu next week? Yes, uh, actually, it's quite tight schedule. Next Friday, um, Timu will talk about uh, my data principles and. Uh, and Paula will, will give um, kind of a results of what we have in this workshop to fit it so that um, it, will, it might inspire some of the um, um, employees themselves in, in, in Fujitsu, they can reproduce this um, um, this workshop. And I already have two, two NGOs, I think it's in UK, that they're asking if this is free, if it's free, then uh, they, they're thinking of asking Paula to, to, to redo this workshop again at their place. So. Uh, it, it, it's going to be a good things that we are spreading the the idea to to enterprise and then and then get more help from them. So that, that's Could you share this you. signing up link in the, in oh, the uh, chat sorry. for D, D for CR. CR? Uh, that, that's in house only, so it will be just for Fujitsu employees only. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so so the Danes are invading southern Sweden again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, actually, I, I think I will make the same presentation with the outcomes of this in one of the bi-weekly meetings, probably not tomorrow, but in a two weeks. So mm -hmm. then you can join that. Yeah, I can share uh, that meeting information. Yes, yes. this is my, my hometown and it's uh, on the shit list in Sweden. It's the, all the help is needed. So thanks. Okay. <laughs> And then uh, 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 we have the UNICEF Global Forum and AI for Children. I don't know, Ifoti, you want to sh invite people here now? I'm, I'm sorry, I have a little helper here, so I was a little bit distracted. <laughs> no quiet. problem. Did you want to I'm just, I'm the, just AI, promoting the, 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 global, the global Forum. forum. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so um, UNICEF is organizing together with the, the Foreign Ministry of Finland an event um, at the end of this month, the 30th and the 30th, I mean the first. And um, it is a two day event, two afternoons where lots of different organizations who are interested in um, artificial intelligence and how oh, to make it, no, oh, sweetie, thank you. How to make it child friendly uh, will gather. So uh, whether you're a company, oh, you to, but thank you. Whether you're a company or like an educational or like, a representative of academia or anybody else, you're welcome to come. And um, Paula, how can we share the, the invitation or the registration form? Can we do it through you or? Or you can uh, go to- can... Yeah. It, it has been widely promoted in the okay. uh, uh, My Data Slack, but we can put it again. We can put all these links in the uh, My Data for Children channel in Slack. And it has- uh, a... and this... It, it overlaps very much with this conversation that we're having right now. So, so if any of you are interested, please join us. I think it's gonna be a super exciting event. Yes, we are actually, I will be joining one of the uh, panels discussing about these themes of representing my data that on, on November 30th, I think it was about five o'clock finish time. I'll put That's the details. That's right, it's organized yeah, in the afternoon. Yeah, yes. look forward to having you there, Paula. Yes, thank you so much, Oti. Looking forward. Then uh, uh, we have the design for children's right. Uh, they are going to have two events upcoming: uh, Malmo talks also next week, in which one designer is talking about the experience from the children's uh, hospital in Copenhagen. Uh, you can sign up 
uh, via Eventbrite and through the Sign for Children's Rights website. And then in January, they are planning, but the details are not yet out there, Design for Systems, Future and Children. So uh, also check this uh, group. They organize a lot of very cool uh, activities and really wonderfully facilitated workshops. And finally, Tieke, Miko, share your project. Yes, thank you. So um, I'm coordinating a project at Tieke called My Data Secure. So the target group is teenagers, um, actually from 14 to 22 years old. And the aim is to raise awareness about data privacy and EU ratified rights during this project. Uh, it will end in the end of this year, so only one month and a half remaining. And we have developed a lot of this kind of educational content. Unfortunately, right now, everything is still in Finnish, but hopefully there will be uh, following projects next year uh, where we could also produce something in English. And I'm going to at least write write some thoughts down uh, in Finnish and in English as well about this project. And maybe those can benefit others as well who may have may want to develop learning materials or provide this kind of education for, for youth. Uh, we've been mostly communicating through social media, so doing some influencer marketing and sharing our videos on Diegas channel. So feel free to follow us on Instagram also. So yeah, that's our project. And as I said, it will end it in the end of this year, but hopefully there will be new ones in the future. Yes, thank you, Miko. And I see that Ansk will raise a hand. Uh, no, uh, by accident. Uh, okay, <laughs> yes. Does anyone uh, uh, have anything to share that you think this group would find interesting? Some trade or happening? Uh, just um, one thing, I guess, on the, the UNICEF, um, the children AI um, is really uh, super interesting because I think it's the culmination of like um, a lot of efforts to, to think about this for a long time. And uh, there's a uh, there's a, a consent, you know, uh, receipt like a, a, a privacy notice uh, record um, project, you know, with international standards, which we think could be the uh, AI for children or provide uh, autom automatic privacy uh, transparency over uh, children's preferences and you know upfront. So looking forward to to hopefully like um, that type of breakthrough in 2022. So it seems like uh, this is a really great start. So thank you so much, Paula and Dixon and everyone for for putting your passion here. Thank you so much, Mark. And, and just a few notes about uh, uh, us. We would be, uh, very much appreciate because as mentioned at the beginning, this was a thorough experiment, but at least I'm happy. I think we learned a lot and, and that it, uh, uh, we achieved a lot of uh, good thinking in such a short time, but it would be very helpful uh, for us if you can give feedback on what worked, what didn't work and your recommendations of what to do next. So you can either write it in the chat now or send a message uh, uh, to myself or Dixon or in the Slack at any time. Then if you want to learn more, join our Slack at My Data for Children. And we also have bi-weekly meetings on Fridays every second week. So the next one is tomorrow. The invitation is in Slack. We are going to produce some publication in January uh, 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 that will include part of this workshop and it will also summarize what we have learned that is happening in this field. It's not yet a proper white paper, but it's a summary of, 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 of discussions and ideas and so on. And then we are also looking forward of how can we move forward next year. And for that, it's very clear for us that collaboration is the, 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 the key thing. So rather than to say, we're going to do this. We want to have dialogues with all of you to see where we can uh, have the biggest impact with the, with the least effort. So very opportunistic approach that let's bring together people that share the same interest and the same drive and let's come out with a project. Uh, we will be uh, uh, 
very much in contact with the organizations that have advised us and support us in the past. So uh, uh, we hope to continue working clo closely together with uh, UNICEF as well with CITRA and of course with uh, Tieke Fujitsu and Designing for Children's Rights. But uh, we are open to any kind of collaboration and ideas. I think what we want to do is have the biggest impact possible and make the future for children. And then also, of course, for ourselves uh, are better. So uh, uh, just to conclude, we open this invitation to everyone and we hope that this is the start of a really good conversation with all of you. Thank you so much, everyone, for participating. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Miko. Thank, so Thank you, everyone, for participating. Thank you, especially to, to, to Dixon and Nico for so much help today. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. Yeah. I'll, I'll Thank share you. the video and, and the chats later on. So hopefully it's, uh, we, we can share it within one, one place. So. Thanks. I'll stop the recording. Great.